Hi, I'm Kathleen Walker, and I'm an entomologist at the University of Arizona, which means I study insects. And I have always loved science, and I really loved plants when I was a kid, but whenever I looked at plants, I noticed they were always with insects on them and insects around them. So I decided I would focus on the insects as well as the plants. Um, and what I study now are mosquitoes, which are insects that nobody really likes but they're really important because they can transmit serious diseases to people, to other animals, and even between other animals and people. So I want to understand where the mosquitoes are and how we can control them without um, using chemicals and things that are going to cause more trouble than they um, solve. So here are my little study organisms. Wake up, guys. Can you see them kind of dancing around in there? And you might say, well, those don't look like mosquitoes. Those look like little worms. And this shows you the part of the mosquito life that is their, um, I'm going to stir them up. Wake up. They get scared and they go to the bottom. Um, the mosquitoes that we think of are the adult mosquitoes that fly around and the females bite us so that they can get our blood to lay eggs. But the weakness of all mosquitoes is that they have to have water to lay their eggs and to grow up. So these are larvae. Um, it's basically the equivalent of children. And they have to be in water. So when you want to understand mosquitoes, you have to understand where the water is. And the water and the mosquitoes I'm particularly interested in are not the kind that live in big marshes or ditches or lakes. They're the kind that live only in water that people have created, water that people have left in their own containers. So this is all about humans making mosquito habitat and then getting bitten by the mosquitoes they accidentally reared. So um, the mosquito that I'm especially interested in is been in the news a lot. It's called Aedes aegypti. It's a little stripy mosquito and she can carry Zika and Dengue and Chikungunya and Yellow Fever. And she only lives here where there are people. She's not native here. She does not like to use the native riparian areas. She only likes places around people's houses where people collect water, usually by accident. So we're going to look around my yard and figure out all the places that mosquitoes can find a home because I have done something unwise with my water. So the first thing is, let's see, um, it's much easier for mosquitoes to find water in the rainy season. But if you have sprinkler irrigation or if you just slop your water around, mosquitoes can find a place to live year round. So let's move over here. So this is the classic messy place that everybody has in their yard. And I'm going to take along with me a little white bowl so that I can see. And I'm going to look for some water. And I can already see there's water here, so maybe there's water over here. My kids were having a water gun fight. And they left water in the bottom of the bowl with their water guns. Now you might say, well, how can a mosquito live in that? And the answer is very easily. So let's see. Let's pour it out. It's hard to see when it's all dirty. So let's see if there's anybody swimming in there. Do you see anyone swimming? I see a lot of dirt swimming, but I don't see any mosquitoes. OK, so that's clean. Now I'm going to do something more intelligent, like turn the bowl over, and I'll give this plant the water. So one thing that we all do here in the desert is we grow plants in pots and we have to give them water because it's way, way, way too dry. And sometimes people just have a pot like this. This is a good pot that just lets the water that's extra drain out in the bottom. And there's no way for the water to stay in a little container and be mosquito habitat. And all these have no plates underneath them. So even if I water them too much, which is wasteful, the water will just go away. It won't collect. But if you come over here, we thought we would give our tomatoes extra water. And we put a little saucer around it. Oh, bad idea. So let's take this one up. Ugh, and it's really heavy. And look at all the water in here. And this is water that gets added to all the time, because you know you have to keep watering your plant. So it's perfect for my mosquito. 
see anything. I have to get really close. And so remember, you're looking for little wormy things that are swimming around. And sometimes they get scared, so they don't want to swim. I don't think I see anything in there. Do you see anything in there? No. I think we're good. OK. So I'm going to give it to plants. And now I'm not going to use that. And I'm just going to put it back like that. All right, here we have the other tomato plant. And we have an even grosser looking dish. You got to like gross water in my line of work. Let's see. Is there anybody swimming in there? Let's let it settle. Oh, I see little tails flicking. Look, do you see them? They come to the surface to breathe. They actually breathe out of their butts, but that's interesting. There they come. Aha! We have found you. And so these mosquitoes, when they turn into adults, they don't fly very far. So they would pretty much have bitten me and my family. So by finding them, you can protect yourself. But you know, these also are not native. They don't belong here. And the only reason they can live here is that we humans create habitat. So this is something that, this is a habitat we should not be creating. It doesn't belong. And it's also a waste of water. So in a riparian area, if somebody created water, would they like compete for other reasons? Um, this mosquito would not go there. They don't like to be, I mean, most mosquitoes um, that I found of this species are within about 10 feet of someone's house. They're very close. They, they like our blood. But we have a lot of native mosquitoes here in Arizona that love um, more natural environments. Riparian zones themselves that have moving water are not their thing. But where you have water that's backed up and still, like a lot of times when you see the stream start to dry out and there's little isolated pools, those get full of mosquito larvae. And they try to develop really fast so that they can escape before the water dries up. Um, some mosquitoes are native and they're a really important part of the food chain. Lots of fish eat them, lots of other insects. But this mosquito does not belong here. Um, it was brought over hundreds of years ago by accident from Africa. And um, we just need to take better care of our water to get rid of it. <laughs> ah. so, uh, you want to show